Welcome back to the channel. I've been away from the farm this week, so sorry for the delay in the video. I was pleased to see that PGRO were showing companion crop trials at cereals, which unlike Groundswell is the showcase for conventional farming. So their trial plots showed peas and oats at a 50-50 mix, beans and oats at a 50-50 mix, beans and oats at 50 versus 100, and peas and beans at 70-50. A real challenge for any integrated management system, but especially a regenerative system, is developing a sustainable rotation. And I think any companion crop combination where crops complement each other to improve crop canopy architecture, for example, peas in oats, uh, it's very interesting. Also, having an LER, the land equivalent ratio, being used as a standard measure is helpful. LER is a measure of the output from the intercrop versus the alternative monoculture. An LER of greater than one is an indication that the growing uh, crops together is potentially advantageous. Obviously, this will put attention on separating this, the different seeds after harvest. And it was noticeable as you went round cereals that there was a response from the seed cleaner manufacturers with more small output rotary cleaners being displayed at cereals. We have a small output uh, cleaner ourselves exactly for this future demand. So NIAB a stand was pretty was well placed. It gave more details of their clover intercropping trial, which I'd like to have a quick look at. There was a negative yield response after the inclusion of an intercrop in all but the zero nitrogen companion crop trial. This is to be expected as clover growth is inhibited by nitrogen application. So increasing artificial nitrogen actually inhibits the ability of clover to fix nitrogen. However, uh, what was more interesting was their study of the economic response. Taking into account the cost of the nitrogen and the cost of the clover with its establishment, Conventional beat the clover intercropping by £1,000 a hectare in the zero nitrogen trial, where clover with 50% of the conventional nitrogen was beaten by nearly £2,100 a hectare, and clover with 100% nitrogen was beaten by £2,700 per hectare. So the best financial response was in a mix of winter and spring cropping. The lesson that I took away is that if you're going to go with clover end cropping, you have to go all in with zero in. Well, at least that's something we got right. I'd like to break from intercropping for a second to look at another NIAB tool, NIAB's variety fungicide tool. It aims to, to identify the sweet spot between fungicide spend depending on varieties. The boards compare the different optimal fungicide spend for a high risk variety like Myriad at 105 to 140 pounds a hectare against a low risk variety such as X days, which we're growing an optimal spend of 56 to 87 pounds per hectare, still significantly higher than our minimal spend strategy. And this brings me on to the next observation. In the AHDB tent, there was a discussion about the triple bottom line chaired by LEAF chairman Caroline Drummond. The point I'd like to make about these NIAB ACE studies is that they only focus on the financial element. There is no reference to the other two bottom lines. Uh, 
I'm sure the society element could be covered by the provision of yield, but the environmental impact is still up for representation. If fungicides are later shown to have damaged soil fungi, or if nitrogen application is shown to contribute to bacterial breakdown of soil carbon, surely the environmental factors need to be considered in future studies. Before we go back to the farm, a quick reminder, please subscribe to this video and give it a thumbs up. We need subscriber numbers and likes to get YouTube to recommend the channel. If we're going to show growers that regenerative farming is possible, channels like this one need to be accessible to other subscribers. So please subscribe. Okay, back to the farm. We are involved in the yen trials, the yield enhancing network. And this week we were required to measure the number of wheat heads from above using an A4 sheet of paper as a calibration method. We are running yen in one of our low input fields, but I thought it would also be interesting to count the heads on one of our strongest looking fields of Lennox Flexi Wheat. So, using the AHDB growth guide, we have 750 heads per meter squared, more than their suggestion of 400 heads per meter squared. In fact, they state at shoot numbers over 400 per meter squared, mutual shading results in fewer grains per ear. When I then did a grain count, I found a massive 60 grains per ear, but a significant number was small. Could this be the result of poor light intensity that we're experiencing in the moment? Assuming these small grains are wasted either by the plant or by the combine and we achieve the objective of 60 grains per ear, we could achieve 45,000 grains per meter squared, well outside their maximum 25,000 curve on their graph. So I'm looking forward to the rain stopping and the sun shining and the start of harvest. See you all next time. Bye.